Every time you board a jet, you place your trust in a single machine that turns air and fuel into enough force to lift hundreds of tons of metal into the sky. It begins by drawing in air at high speed through a carefully shaped inlet, slowing it just enough to avoid shockwaves. That air then meets a giant fan whose twisted blades act like wings, splitting the flow into two streams. Most of the air bypasses the core to add cool thrust, while the rest moves deeper into the engine. In just seconds, this steady flow of air sets the stage for a complex dance of compression, combustion, and expansion that creates continuous power. Before the jet age, airplanes relied on piston engines driving propellers. Those engines worked well at low speeds, but lost efficiency as planes climbed higher. In the late 1930s, Frank Whittle in England and Hans von Ohain in Germany each built a practical gas turbine in parallel efforts. Their designs replaced reciprocating pistons with spinning turbines. By compressing air, injecting fuel, igniting it, and using the hot exhaust to spin turbines, they created a lighter, more powerful engine. Within a decade, jets halved transcontinental flight times and made global travel routine. At the heart of every modern jet engine lies the Brayton cycle, a continuous loop of four actions, intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust. Air rushes in at the front, gets squeezed by multiple compressor stages until its pressure climbs dozens of times over. Fuel sprays into this high-pressure air and ignites, producing temperatures above 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The resulting high-speed gases blast out the back through a nozzle, creating thrust. As they pass through turbines, they spin shafts that power the compressors and the front fan, so the process repeats without interruption thousands of times per minute. After entering through the inlet, air meets the fan, which often measures over 8 feet in diameter on large commercial engines. Each blade has a twist, wider near the hub and thinner at the tip. That geometry ensures the blade moves roughly at the same relative speed through the air, along its length, maximizing efficiency. The fan produces most of the thrust by accelerating a large mass of air a small amount. Bypass ratios above 10 to 1 mean 10 times more air bypasses the core than enters it. That cold stream cuts fuel burn, lowers noise, and reduces heat in the core. The core airflow then travels into the low-pressure compressor, a series of fewer but broader rotor blades. Each spinning rotor pushes air into a narrower passage, raising its pressure by about four times. Stationary stator vanes downstream realign the flow before it hits the next rotor. After a handful of these stages, the high-pressure compressor takes over. It uses many more, much thinner blades packed in closer. The pressure multiplies again until it reaches 20 to 30 times the starting value. This high pressure air carries a dense packing of oxygen molecules, essential for efficient fuel burn. Once the air reaches peak pressure, it enters the combustion chamber. A robust steel shell lined with cooling passages and thermal coatings. Fuel injectors evenly spray a fine mist of jet fuel into the compressed air. Igniters spark the mixture, and a stable ring of flame holders keeps the fire lit even as gas rushes through at high speed. Temperatures soar past 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, far hotter than most metals can withstand. To protect the chamber walls, a thin sheet of cooler air bleeds through tiny holes, forming a barrier that insulates the metal from the heat. Beyond the combustor, the hot gases blast into the high-pressure turbine. This turbine connects to the high-pressure compressor via a central shaft. As gases rush over the turbine blades, they spin the shaft, driving the compressor and sustaining the cycle. Further downstream, the low-pressure turbine grabs remaining energy to drive the fan and the low-pressure compressor. These turbines endure intense heat and forces. Engineers shape blades with internal cooling channels and coat them with ceramic barriers. Today's blades often form from single crystal superalloys, which resist deformation at temperatures exceeding 2,000 degrees. After the turbines extract energy, 
the exhaust flows into a convergent-divergent nozzle. In the narrowing section, pressure drops and velocity rises until the gas reaches Mach 1 at the throat. As the passage widens, the gas expands further and accelerates to supersonic speeds, producing a high-speed jet. This exhaust jet pushes against the surrounding air and, by Newton's third law, propels the engine and the aircraft forward. Subtle adjustments in nozzle geometry let modern engines optimize performance across different flight conditions. Military engines add another stage, the afterburner. In this section, extra fuel sprays into the hot exhaust and ignites, creating a second flame. A ring of flame holders stabilizes this burn. Temperatures climb even higher and thrust can nearly double. Pilots use afterburners for rapid acceleration during takeoff or combat maneuvers, but the fuel cost is enormous. Every pound of thrust from an afterburner consumes far more fuel than normal operation. To achieve higher efficiency, engineers push engine temperatures to the limits. Turbine blades now use single crystal super alloys that contain no grain boundaries for maximum strength. They carve intricate serpentine cooling channels inside each blade and inject compressor air through microscopic holes to form a protective film. Thermal barrier coatings add another layer of insulation. Fan cases use aluminum-titanium alloys for strength and lightweight. Ceramic matrix composites appear in shrouds and liners, where extreme heat resistance matters most. Keeping these complex machines safe and reliable demands rigorous maintenance. Airlines use boroscopes, flexible camera probes, to inspect the hot section without tearing down the engine. They analyze oil samples for metal particles that signal wear. Vibration sensors track imbalances in rotating parts. Mechanics replace turbine blades and seals during hot section inspections every few thousand flight hours. A full engine overhaul strips components down to the core, rebuilds and recoats parts, and tests performance under simulated conditions. This cycle restores engines to nearly factory condition and extends their life for decades. Looking ahead, the next generation of jet engines promises even greater efficiency and lower emissions. Geared turbofan designs insert a gearbox between the fan and turbine shafts, letting each spin at its optimal speed. Open rotor concepts ditch the duct entirely, using counter-rotating propellers for bypass ratios above 15, which could cut fuel burn by up to 30%. Hybrid electric systems plan to pair turbines with electric motors for takeoff and climb, smoothing peak power demands. Additive manufacturing prints complex cooling channels in single-piece structures, reducing weight and part counts. Today's jet engine stands as a triumph of engineering, a seamless integration of airflow control, high-pressure combustion, advanced materials, and precise cooling. Each component, from the inlet lip that shapes incoming air, to the nozzle that accelerates exhaust, plays a vital role in turning simple elements into reliable thrust. Next time you fly, remember the hidden world inside that nacelle on the wing. If you enjoyed this deep dive, subscribe for more explorations of the machines that shape our world, and let us know which marvel you'd like to uncover next. Thanks for watching.